okay. Well, how do you feel? Um, do you feel obliged to play some of the, like um, uh, any sixteen horsepower uh, classics? Um, I don't feel obliged to do it. No, I mean people always want it, of course, yeah. and um, once in a while I, I do um, play one or two, but I've. It's hard for me to go back and play these older songs a lot of times just because I, I'm not in the same place in my mind mm. as I was when I wrote them and maybe I feel differently or I, hopefully I've become more mature in my life and my faith and things like that and it's almost kind of uh, painful to go back and sing some of the old songs, you know. Uh, Is that because of the times that were there or because of, what, you know, the, the, um, the song itself reminds you of a... Uh, something particularly painful or it's po it, that can be the case mm -hmm. but I think more more than anything it's just I have a different chain I have a different frame of mind mm -hmm. and it's hard for me to go back into that place where I was before and sing something that maybe I'm not so confident anymore mm -hmm. of singing okay yeah. you know I noticed a while ago on your on your myspace page there's a link um, for uh, I think it's living ministries uh, yeah living God ministry okay yeah. living God ministries is that um, is, is that um, that's the church I go to okay right uh, when you're when you're home, uh, you're not touring. Of course, your father. Mm -hmm. um, are you involved actively in the in the church yourself? Only as as far as I go. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you know? right, right. I mean, I'm not home on a regular enough basis to really uh, commit to mm -hmm. certain things about it. I mean, it's not really. You know, we just meet in a in a closet basically. There's only like 40 people, 50 well, it's people. It's quite small. And um, it's not a denomination of any sort. You okay. know, it's just a Christian church and. Um, the the preacher he was a rabbi at one time, a very heavy uh, Orthodox uh, Jewish man who became a believer, and um, so it's a really interesting frame of reference, you know. Yeah. And it's been fantastic for me. But uh, it, yeah, I just go on a very you know a lot of times even if I am home I don't go to church because you know, I I just want to stay home and sure. not do anything, you know. But uh, that doesn't concern me, you know. I, I I spend a lot of time with people who are believers, so that to me is church. You know? yeah. And uh, I don't have to go to the building, you know. To... How does um, how does uh, life, uh, the touring life, you know, with uh, you know, I mean, obviously uh, I don't know myself, but uh, yeah, we hear about the, the debauchery and you know the, the mm -hmm. whole rock and roll lifestyle mm -hmm. and this and that. I mean, is that something that um, is a problem for you? I've had problems with it, sure. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and nowadays, if you're kind of in this, let's say, um, a more uh, settled uh, state of mind. Uh, assuming you are, whether you're not, I'm not sure. <laughs> but it, and then is it something that you find uh, you find bothersome if uh, if it's going on around you or not? Um, can, can you close your eyes and just ignore it and let other people be other people? Or yeah, I mean I have to, you know, yeah. and uh, but also it just it just causes me grief, you know. It causes me sadness for for people around me and yeah. and for just, just the world in general, you know. It's just. Uh, you know, people looking for satisfaction and happiness and things that it's not that it is not going to they're not going to get it from. You know, um, have you seen it more in touring life than you know home life or <laughs> and regular life? Sorry, um, uh, not necessarily. You know, no. I mean, I have a, you know, growing up, I had a lot of friends who you know, I thought a lot of friends die and you know, just uh, you know, I've always been part of this music world, so. Um, it's, I've always been around it, you know, yeah. and so it's always been a part of, you know, I've had, you know, I've had troubles with drugs and things mm -hmm. like this and over the course of my life. And you know. did, did you have the same kind of faith back then as you? Yes, did now? always. Always, yeah. Always, okay. you know, I've you know I've always believed in since I was a child, and um, it's never been something that I was trying to necessarily run away from consciously. You know, I, I guess in some sort of way, of course I am running, but um, I've never doubted that God was there. I've never doubted that Christ has done what he has done for me. And I, of course I doubt myself that, you know, I doubt my own salvation. I doubt, you know, I doubt everything mm -hmm. except God. I don't have, I've never doubted God. Okay, so this is just maybe teenage rebellion or just, you know, or just the thing I guess so, I guess yeah. so, okay. yeah. And, you know, and also, you know, growing up younger, you know, all the people that I looked up to, they were all, you know, junkies or, mm. you know, <laughs> or, you know, musically, you know, these yeah. people that I looked up to. So uh, it was easy to fall into this trap of, you know, doing what they did to to experience what they've experienced sure. or, or whatever, you know. And um, 
yeah, it's all a, you know a dead end road. You know. How about this, um, fatherhood? Did you become a father quite early? I did. Yeah, I got married when I was eighteen. Okay. So I've been married for twenty three years, twenty two years, okay. and uh, my daughter was born maybe a year and a half or so after I was married. Okay. Uh, so and uh, at that point, um, was that something that was proved to be um, uh, a settling influence for you? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think if I if I didn't marry as early as I did and had children the way I had children, I would be uh, not very well off. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, so so that's been a good thing as well. It has. Been. Yeah. So if you have a daughter now who's uh, who's in her early twenties, what, right. what does she think about um, about the old man uh, uh, and his um, his uh, his job? Is that, she, uh, well, you know, she she's always been. Does it make her the coolest kid in class when she was in school? It, it has at, yeah, at certain yeah. times, and also it, it's made it difficult for her, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of people just immediately think of her as being arrogant because her father is, you know, in a rock band and yeah. traveling the world yeah. or whatever. So some, uh, it's it's not oh it's not always easy for her, no. and a lot of times she doesn't even tell people you know yeah. who who she is or right. especially the older she gets the more she the less she connects, you know, makes that connection to try to to win people over, if you know what I mean, and she just wants to be her own person and do her own thing. But she's, you know, she's great. She comes to my shows and she loves the music. And, yeah. um, Is she musical herself? Does she play? Yeah, I mean, she played on uh, one of the 16 horsepower albums, she played some violin and she sang on one. And, uh, right now she doesn't play any music, she just kind of hangs out with her boyfriend who's a musician and plays in a band. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, uh, you know, it's uh, the father figure, you mm -hmm. know, leading on to if she's with her music, uh, mm -hmm. musician boyfriend now. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was curious to ask you, um, there's, again, going back to this, uh, the, um, the, the thing with the metal scene, um, there's a band from Sweden called Marduk, who are a black metal band, mm -hmm. and I, I read an interview with them where they said they have um, not released it yet, but uh, recorded a woven hand cover. Right. I don't know what song. Yeah, Deer Skin Doll. It is, yeah. Mm. Have you heard it? I haven't. Okay, right. Are you keen to hear it? Oh, yeah, I'd, li I'd like to hear it. But so, so if the boys see this, they can send it over? Yeah. You know, do the right exactly. thing? Yeah. There's another band from Ireland uh, called uh, Primordial, and um, uh, the the singer has uh, stated in a couple of inter interviews recently that since he heard uh, Woven Hand, it's kind of, it's become pretty much the band for him. Mm -hmm. uh, to the point where on their newest album, uh, he actually borrowed a line from 16 Horsepower, mm. um, Every Man is Evil, Every Man's a Liar. Mm. Um, as he said, as a as a tribute to uh, to, to Woven Hand, um, or to you, Woven Hand and Sixteen Horsepower, something like that. It's um, how cool do you think that is, or is it? I think it's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, just to have these people, like I said before, you know, just to even take an interest in the first place, and you know, because seemingly our worlds are so far apart, but yeah. and I think in reality they are very close. Yeah. And um, I know the band Primordial. I mean, I've never seen them, but. Uh, just through the computer, and yeah. um, I think they're really a good band. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I'd be very happy to hear that. And yeah, I'd love to see them play at some point. Then. There you go, make it happen. <laughs> I think that's a very good point to to wind up on. Um, Devin, thank you very much for your time. Yeah. It was a pleasure. And uh, yeah, check out Woven Hand, everybody. All right. All right. <laughs>